Time now for the Nick Hart Show, our weekly chat with the head coach of the Gibson Southern Titans, Nick Hart. It's brought to you by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, Brett's Car Care, a t Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Homes, Carriage Inn, Chips, SellMyTees.com, by Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC Shelter Insurance, by Davis Brothers, Daylight Land Management, LLC, Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Dillbeck Properties, Diversified Instruments, Duke Energy, Emerson Cattle Company, ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Langford, by Fast Break Convenience Stores, by Flanders, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Foster Construction, Ryman Land Service LLC, by Hobstadt Summerfest, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum, Hillside Gardens Landscaping and Garden Center, HMC Gears, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Nathan Belot. By Jarbo Tax Service. JMCO Technologies. Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated. K&K Excavating Incorporated. Casey Fuquay, State Farm Agent. Kathy Solman Photography. Key Construction Company Incorporated. Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC. By Lively Machine Company. By Landscape Supply Incorporated. Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, also by Parker Excavating, Perfect Climate Heating, Air and Plumbing, by Pole Concrete Construction, Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated, by Pro Rehab of Hobstock, Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency, Rawhide Golf Supplies, Ryano Family Fitness, Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage, Shearer Monument, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, the Titan Youth Football League. By Varnado Construction. Vomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated. We Simply Clean. By Whitledge Tree Service. And Young's Auto Body. The Nick Hart Show, a special production of the Wabash Valley College Radio TV and Digital Media Department. First, and as always, a statistical look at Friday's win against Princeton. In the rushing game, Zach Foster, 10 attempts, 80 yards and a touchdown. Chase Thaxton, 8 attempts, 42 yards and a touchdown. Number 13, Bo Rose with 4 attempts, 3 touchdowns, a long of 11, a total of 22 yards. Gunnar Alexander, 7 attempts, 39 yards and a touchdown. Eli Foster, 4 attempts, 103 yards and a 90-yard touchdown in the last quarter. Number 18, Caden Roshlow with three attempts, 38 yards, and a touchdown. In the passing game, Zach Foster went 13 for 19 for 106 yards, no touchdowns to one interception, a rating of 60.4. Number 18, Caden Roshlow went 0 for 1 with a rating of 39.6. Receiving 87, Toby Pullum, two targets, two receptions, 18 yards. Jay Staxton, one reception, six yards. Seth Parsons. Three receptions, 23 yards. Grant Stinson, four receptions, 38 yards. Maddox Potts, two receptions, 15 yards. And Lloyd Sellers in his debut this season, one reception and six yards. Now to the interview with Coach Nick Hart. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Coach Nick Hart Show. Week four coming down. Coach, first of all, how exactly do you follow up a performance like you had on Friday against Princeton? Um, you know, it's a big week for us. Uh, South Warren's a uh, great football team. Uh, the, the best one we played today. Um, so it's going to take a great week of practice out of us. And, 
you know, and taking that that practice over, that execution over uh, to Friday night because you know, we're we're gonna have to play really really well uh, to to have a chance to win the the ball game. And Bo Rose on Friday was remarkable. Just what do you make of his performance? Yeah, um, you know, Bo's a, a great athlete and football player, and he can do a lot of things for us. So, you know, you kind of look at how he's involved, um, you know, kind of being the goal line back and, and picking up some touchdowns. Um, you know, he's obviously very good defensively, returning all state guy and, and scored a touchdown on defense and then blocked a punt. So, uh, you know, Bo was, was involved uh, positively in, in all three phases of the game. And, you know, to be able to have a guy like that that can, uh, can do those things, um, you know, certainly helps a, a football team. And how important is it for him to be in those short yardage uh, situations? And how does that overall help the squad? Yeah, um, it, it's great. Uh, you know, he, he runs really well downhill behind his pads. Uh, he's a big, strong kid. Um, so, um, you know, that, that gives him a, a, a great chance of success. Um, I, I thought, more importantly, uh, I thought our offensive line – uh, you know, did a did a great job in those situations. We got good movement and displaced guys, and um, you know, made it made his job a lot easier. Um, so, uh, no, he's a, a nice uh, weapon to have in in those type of situations, uh, without a doubt. But I, I thought our offensive line executed really well in those situations. Uh, you know, to make his job a lot easier. And speaking on the offensive line, it seems they've improved steadily from week to week. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, they, they have uh, gotten a lot better as, as we've gone through. And, uh, you know, there's still some things we can improve at um, and, and get better at as, as we continue to go through the season. Um, but but they have really improved uh, since week one. I mean, we only have, we have a lot of guys that play football over there, but we only have one senior uh, on the offensive line. So um, I think that's just, you know, guys kind of getting used to, to the Friday night lights and, and the routine of, of varsity football. So, um, yeah, they, they've made a, a huge improvement. We got a ways to go, um, but but we're in a lot better spot on the offensive line than, than what we were week one. And with all of the inexperience coming into the season at the varsity level, how do you think they've improved from week to week and how happy are you with the improvement? Yeah, I think especially offensively, uh, you know, we continue to get better. I, th I think our defense has, has played at a really high level. Um, I think one thing, um, we're getting better at, but got to continue to get better at is our preparation through the week, uh, you know, under, understanding some of the changes that, that go in week to week and and, and how you're preparing, uh, you know, for certain opponents. And, you know, this week is is one of those. South Warren um, does a, a lot of stuff offensively um, where, where defensively, you know, we got to be on top of things and, and know where we're, we're at and where we're supposed to be. So, um you know, I think that's one thing as a team that we can continue to get better at is, is how we prep through the week uh, leading into a Friday night. The JV team got a lot of experience on Friday and the Friday previous. It seemed that from Mount Carmel to Princeton, the JV got better. How happy are you with the improvement that the JV team made in the second half in Princeton? Yeah, you know, I think uh, in both games, and they played really well Friday, uh, to your point, but I think in both games, I, I've been pretty pleased with with how our young guys have come in and played in the second half. And, um, you know, that's something that, that we kind of talk about. We don't want to see a drop off um, from an execution standpoint, uh, you know, whenever those younger guys get in the game. And I, I think they've done a, a really good job here the past couple of weeks of, of coming in and and playing good football. Um, and again, there's some mistakes that are made, and I think that's to be expected. Uh, they're not getting the, the number of reps that the varsity is. Uh, but uh, I think those guys uh, played really well on both sides of the ball uh, this past Friday. And you've spoken in the past how there is always a difference between the scout team and the varsity. But with the level of opponent this Friday in South Warren, how do you make sure that the scout team is able to give quality looks for the varsity guys to prepare them? Yeah, um, it, you, you know, you're not going to get a replicated look, um, you know, from a speed perspective, a size perspective. Um, you know, our, our varsity couldn't replicate, uh, you know, what South Warren will bring in on Friday. So, um, you know, it's about those guys playing hard, being lined up um, where they're supposed to be. And and given the, the varsity um, the best look that they possibly can, um, you know, and then it's, 
you know, the, the starter's job to, to kind of adjust to that size and speed, uh, you know, whenever we get out there on Friday. Coming up next on the Coach Hart Show, we talk about a tough out-of-conference schedule and the high tempo offense that Gibson Southern brings to the table. The Nick Hart Show on 89.1 The Bash is brought to you by Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, a and Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Homes, Brett's Car Care, Carriage Inn, Chips, SellMyTees.com, by Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC, Shelter Insurance, by Davis Brothers, Daylight Land Management, LLC, Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Dillbeck Properties, Diversified Instruments, Duke Energy, Emerson Cattle Company, ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Langford. By Fast Break Convenience Stores. By Flanders. By Fort Branch Car Wash. Foster Construction. Ryman Land Service, LLC. By Hobstadt Summerfest. And by Wabash Valley College. Now, South Warren is a very tough non-conference opponent, and you've scheduled a lot of non-conference tough non-conference opponents in the past. What is the mindset in doing that? Yeah, I just think, uh, you know, Danville uh, was a prime example. I thought, you know, we we didn't execute particularly well offensively. Um, there was some things that, that we had to fix. And um, when you play somebody like Danville, and I think they're very good defensively, um, that, that exposes you um, whenever you're not uh, where you need to be. So, um, you know, I think these games are good representation for how you have to prepare, um, you know, come November uh, to win some of those big playoff games. Um, you, you have to prepare at a really high level um, to get ready for that. I think, um, you know, the, the past couple of years, um, whether it be South Warren, Boyle County, uh, some of those type of schools, um, you know, I think early in my time here, um, sometimes the best athletes we saw uh, was was when we got into the playoffs. Um, and now for our conference and, and for the, the playoffs, it, it's going to be hard to to find people um, that have a bigger D line than South Warren or have a you know Division one quarterback or you know some of those those type of things. You, you've experienced um, opponents at such a high level that there's not really that shock um, when you get into your your conference. Um, or or the postseason uh, when you're facing you know really high caliber players. Um, so, and then lastly, I think um, you know putting yourselves in adverse situations. Um, you know, getting down um, like we did at Danville um, and finding a way to get back. Uh, you know, making things not easy uh, on your players, on your coaches, on the program as a whole. Um, I think all those things can can prove uh, to to be beneficial down the road. And speaking of those adverse situations, how important is it for over the course of the season, the players to build a mental toughness in those tough situations? Yeah, it's huge um, because at some point, um, somewhere down the line, things aren't going to go well. Um, and I think to have some of those situations where, where you've dug yourself out of a hole, um, and, you know, even if you didn't get the win and, and you dug and, and you continue to compete and, and it paid dividends for you, um, I, I think all those things are, are very important uh, because, you know, in this game, you know, things aren't always going to go your way. And, and so being able to to have that mental mindset of, of going to win the next play um, and something we talk about a lot is, is whether you won the last play or you lost the last play, go in the next one. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that that mindset, um, you know, is, is something that can pay dividends. And this past Friday, it seemed you really upped the tempo against Princeton. Is that something that we should expect to see throughout the course of the year? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if we necessarily went any faster. I think our drives were longer. Um, you know, they they were trying to keep us in, in front of them um, and, uh, and make us put together drives so that the tempo may have seemed – um, a, a little bit quicker because we were able to, to put together drives. Um, I think we had 21 first downs at halftime. Um, so, but yeah, we, we always want to keep that tempo going. Um, you know, we, we think it's to our advantage that, that we're close to two platoon. Um, 
you know, to for games to, to have as many plays as possible. Um, and, and also, we we want to make defenses line up and, and and try and get their call and get lined up um, as quickly as they can. Now, South Warren, obviously, as we've talked about, is a very tough team. How do you make sure that you guys are ready on Friday for that challenge? Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, we, we, we got to have a great week of practice. Um, I think if, if we prepare well, um, you know, we're going to go in and um, be as prepared as we possibly can be. Um, you know, like I said, they're, they're going to have some guys uh, that, uh, you know, it's, it's just hard to prepare for. Um, and they're going to make plays and, and, and you know, we got to go win the next one. Um, so it, it's a great challenge for us. I think one that our, our coaches and players are, are excited for to, to, to be able to, to go up against a team like South Warren, um, who's one of the top 5A teams in Kentucky. And um, just, uh, you know, it, it all starts with, with how we prepare um, and, and how we handle what they're doing and, and, and handle ourselves with the preparation side throughout the week. And then, uh, you know, when they tee up the ball, then it's about going to play. And, and you're not thinking, you're, you're just, you're playing. Um, you know, I think that that's, really important for us coming up next on the coach Hart show we talk about coach nick Hart's strategy for this upcoming matchup against south warren you're listening to the nick Hart show brought to you by heritage federal credit union heritage petroleum hillside gardens landscaping and garden center hmc gears in memory of darwin and eric callis by indiana farm bureau insurance nathan belote by Jarbo Tax Service, JMCO Technologies, Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated, K&K Excavating Incorporated, KC Fuquay State Farm Agent, Kathy Solman Photography, Key Construction Company Incorporated, Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC, by Lively Machine Company, by Landscape Supply Incorporated, Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, Parker Excavating, and by Perfect Climate Heating, Air and Plumbing. And so far throughout this season, South Warren has put up 24 points or more in each of their first three games. How do you make sure the defense is ready for their high-powered offense? Man, they're good. Um, they, they they really are. I think they're they're very creative offensively in what they do. Um, their quarterback's uh, committed to Eastern Michigan, and I think he's a a really good football player, and and he's a, a winning type of football player. Um, he obviously makes good throws. You you, you don't get a FBS offer, um, you know, if you don't have talent. Um, but he's athletic. He's physical. And he always seems to make a play when they need a play. Um, and I think that's the the hallmark of a, of a winning quarterback. And, um, you know, he certainly has that and they're, they're big up front. They're good. Um, and then, like I said, they're, they're very diverse in, in how they get the ball um, in different places. So, uh, you know, I think it's important for us, you know, to, to try and limit some home runs and, and make them hit singles um, and, and take the ball down the field um, because they do have some big play capability. So, you know, if we can keep it in front of us, you know, then we got a chance, uh, you know, to, to, to get some stops along the way and, and not give up those those big ones where, where they get some easy scores. And you talked about earlier their big defensive line. How do you make sure without giving too much away that the offense can go in and compete with that? Yeah, I think, you know, you talked about tempo, um, you know, trying to use our tempo on those guys. If we, if we can put some drives together, um, you know, I think they're, they're really well set up defensively where they have two big, um, good athletic defensive linemen in the interior, um, some good DNs, and then they're really fast around those guys. So, you know, they kind of plug up the middle. Um, and then, uh, you know, they have tremendous team speed um, in the back half of their defense, uh, with the linebackers and secondary. Um, so, you know, they do a great job of plugging up the middle and then they have a lot of really good athletic guys, uh, you know, to, to run things down um, when, when things get bounced out. So, um, you know, we're going to have to execute really, really well. Um, and that's why I like playing these teams. If, if we don't execute at a high level, um, you know, our punt team is, is going to get a, uh, a very good workout uh, on Friday night. So, 
you know, we, we've got to execute it at a really high level um, or it's going to be very difficult to move the football. This week starts a really tough three-week stretch for you guys. You have South Warren, Southridge next week, Heritage Hills the following week. So how do you make sure that everyone stays fresh and game ready throughout these next three weeks? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's, um, you know, football, um, and, and you're right, this is a, a difficult stretch. Um, it's the way we want it um, to, to kind of face that challenge every week. Um, but, but football is such a week-to-week uh, sport, you know, you, you, uh, you know, for us, um, you know, we, we install and walk through on Monday, we practice, uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you have your, your pregame practice on Thursday, uh, you play on Friday and then you just kind of rinse and repeat that cycle. Um, so it's so week to week that, you know, I, I think, especially when you're playing good football teams, but I think any week it's important to, to be focused at the task at hand. Um, on your opponent and on yourselves and, and what you're doing to get ready for Friday night. So um, we, we know there's some big games, some rival games, some really good teams uh, coming down the line. But, you know, right now all of our focus is, is getting ready for Friday night and, and getting ready for a really good football team that's coming in here. Coming up next on the Coach Hart Show, we talk about starting 1-0 in conference play and South Warren's dynamic quarterback. You're dialed in to the Nick Hart Show, brought to you by Whole Concrete Construction, Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated, by Pro Rehab of Hobstock, Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency, Rawhide Golf Supplies, Ryano Family Fitness, Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage, Shearer Monument, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law, PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, the Titan Youth Football League, by Varnado Construction, Vomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated, We Simply Clean, by Whitledge Tree Service, and Young's Auto Body. Time to go back now to the Nick Hart Show. This past Friday, you started 1-0 in the pack. How important is it to start off with a win in conference play? Yeah, um, I like winning every Friday. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the conference um, is, you know, it's the first championship you can win. Um, you know, I, I would say to us, the uh, uh, sectional and, and some of the postseason stuff, uh, you know, would trump a, a conference championship. Um, but I think the conference championship is always important because it's the first championship you can win. Um, so, you know, getting off to a 1-0 start uh, in the league uh, is always great. And, uh, you know, a good start, a, a jump start into the league here. We have two um, out-of-league games. And then, uh, you know, the rest of them after that will be conference games. Um, so, you know, then you can kind of dial back in and, and get ready for all of those. But, uh, yeah, it, any win it is a good win. Um, and, and so uh, we'll, we'll take them whether they're conference games or non-conference games. But, uh, but, yeah, with that being the first championship you can win, definitely good to start 1-0 in the conference. You mentioned that South Warren's quarterback has an, he has an FBS offer. So do you plan on pressuring him and making him get rid of the football quickly, or are you kind of going to let the secondary do their jobs in the back? You know, <laughs> Well, we'd really love to pressure him with our front four um, and then, uh, you know, be able to play coverage in the back end. Um, you know, I think they're really good up front, so I'm not sure that, that that's like the the easy solution. Uh, I guess it is the easy solution, but I'm not so sure how, how well it'll work. Um, you know, I, I think he brings another dynamic to it where if you look at him, um, you know, he's a bigger kid, um, thick tall um but he's super athletic uh and, and he does a great job in the run game as well um so you know i think you always are worried about him uh taking off uh and, and making plays with his legs too so that that's another part of the equation um you know he's he's not like peyton manning or tom brady just sitting back there slinging it around um you know he has the ability to go make plays with his legs as well and so i, I think that adds a another you know, component to, to how you want to, to play them. 
Um, and, you know, we, we've played against him a couple of times. Um, he started as a sophomore, so this will be our third time playing against him. Um, so he's got a lot of game experience. So I'm not sure, you know, if you're going to trick him, um, you know, but you know, if you roll coverage or, you know, you give this look or that look. Um, so, you know, we, we just got to play, you know, what, what we think is best for us and, and put ourselves in, in the best situation possible, um, you know, to, to try and get some stops. Zach Foster has a likes to roll out and improvise as well. Do you think he'll be able to improvise as easily as he has been the past couple of weeks against this very good South Warren team? Well, I sure hope so. Um, that, that'd be great for us. But, uh, you know, I, I think Zach's, um, you know, ability to on ro design rollouts or, or plays that he just extends on his own, um, you know, is, is very difficult to defend. And kind of like I talked about their kid, um, you know, I think there, there are two different types of guys when they run the football. Um, but, you know, you have to worry about both of them, uh, you know, taking off with the football, um, even if it's a called pass. So, uh, you no, know, I to answer your question, um, I don't know if he'll do it as easily because they, they have so much team speed uh, on defense. Um, this is probably, um, you know, not probably, this is the fastest defense that, that we've played yet this year. Um, so, you know, they're, they're going to close things down um, a lot quicker than what we've seen the past couple of weeks. Uh, so, with as easy to answer your question, no. Um, but I think Zach's dynamic and um, can can always, you know, continue to extend plays for us and, and have a chance to make a good play. With that speed that South Warren has, should we expect to see any trick plays or anything different than what we've seen the past three weeks, or are you just going to keep it simple? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to say that one. <laughs> uh, with, <laughs> if Brandon – uh, is listening down in Bowling Green. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, you know, for the most part, um, we're, we're we're always going to add wrinkles um, to to what we see on film and and how we want to try and attack uh, a defense. Um, and again, it's kind of like the the coverage thing. Um, you're always trying to put your yourself in, in your kids, I guess I should say, in in the best position, um, the best possible position they have to succeed. Um, so, you know, that's why our, the staff spends so much time watching tape and looking for, hey, if we got in this formation or if we ran this against, you know, this look um, or we've run this a lot, you know, we want to to counter this, our, our normal action with this. Um, you know, you're always kind of looking for those wrinkles um, that, that will give you a chance to have success. Um, but with that being said, I think it's important that, that all the wrinkles go within your base offense, um, you know, where – we're not coming out in the the wing T uh, on Friday. Um, and if he's listening, I think he probably knows that. Um, you know, we're we're not going to change who we are. Um, it's it's really minor wrinkles, um, some that, that fans might not even recognize. Just you know how we're blocking this or how we're lining up to this. Um, you know, you you try and change some of those things to one. As people are scouting you, you make it look a little bit different. But two. Um, you know, to try and attack what, what you're seeing on film with them, whether it's, um, you know, there's no perfect defense. Every defense has holes, um, whether you're man or zone or three man front or four man front. Um, you know, it's kind of the old coaching adage is whoever has the pin last uh, wins, you know, because if, if you drop a defense, I can drop an offense that, that's uh, a play to, to counteract your coverage or your front or whatever. Um, and same thing, if I draw up a play first, the defensive guy can can draw something up to stop it. So um, you're, you're just trying to add uh, wrinkles within your offense to, to attack maybe some of the seams that they have uh, in their defense or personnel. Um, and with them, it's it's hard to, to find that personnel that, that you want to go after. But, uh, um, you know, you're, you're just trying to do some of those little things to, to create some of those matchups or, or angles or, or whatever it may be. Um, to, to give your kids a chance to have the most success they can. All right, Coach. Well, thank you so much for your time, and good luck this Friday. All right. Thanks, Riley. Thanks for listening to The Nick Hart Show, our weekly chat with the head coach of the Gibson Southern Titans, Nick Hart. It's brought to you by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Absolute Custom Machine, LLC, ADG Architecture and Design Group Limited, Angermeyer Electric, A&T Concrete Supply, Brian Stevens Holmes, 
Brett's Car Care, Carriage Inn, Chips, SellMyTees.com, by Cordray Insurance Agency, LLC, Shelter Insurance, by Davis Brothers, Daylight Land Management, LLC, Daywick Meats of Hobstock, Dillbeck Properties, Diversified Instruments, Duke Energy, Emerson Cattle Company, ERA First Advantage Realty, Rodney Langford, by Fast Break Convenience Stores, by Flanders, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Foster Construction, Ryman Land Service LLC, by Hobstadt Summerfest, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum, Hillside Gardens Landscaping and Garden Center, HMC Gears, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Nathan Belote, by Jarbo Tax Service, JMCO Technologies, Johnson Commercial Mowing Incorporated, K&K Excavating Incorporated, KC Fuquay, State Farm Agent, Kathy Solman Photography, Key Construction Company Incorporated, Kiesel Wagner Survey LLC, by Lively Machine Company, by Landscape Supply Incorporated, Lowry Ag, by MyTech Systems, Morton Solar LLC, by National Vet Health, by Ohio Valley Grain Inspection Incorporated, also by Parker Excavating. Perfect Climate Heating, Air and Plumbing by Pole Concrete Construction. Prodigy Mold and Tool Incorporated by Pro Rehab of Hobstock. Prudential Advisors, The Barthel Agency. Rawhide Golf Supplies. Ryano Family Fitness. Sandy's Pizza and Mini Storage. Shearer Monument. Scotty's Lawn Equipment. Singleton's Country Kennel, Stodgill Funeral Home, Team Black Law, PC, by Tai Chow, The Brass Ring and Pizza Kitchen, The Image Inks Company, Titan Construction Partners, TYFL, the Titan Youth Football League, by Varnado Construction, Vomac Truck Sales and Service Incorporated, We Simply Clean, by Whitledge Tree Service, and Young's Auto Body. The Nick Hart Show, a special production of the Wabash Valley College Radio TV and Digital Media Department.